Here's your next challenge app. At the beginning of the lesson, we created a make your own adventure app using static segues. Now we're gonna expand on that app using data-driven stories. Here's the completed version of data-driven make your own adventure. Here's the tiger story from the beginning of the lesson. Just like before, we navigate through the different nodes by clicking on different prompts. Most of the story nodes have two prompts, but of course the nodes that end the story have none. In a second, we'll look at the code for the data model that drives these stories. Each node in the story has a struct that describes the node's message and the prompts to move on to other story nodes. Right now, you're looking at a completed version of the app, but in the branch for step 5.5, the table view delegate and data source methods for the story node view controller have been left blank. When we run this incomplete version, notice that there are no prompts. Your task is to modify the story node view controller so that this table is working. Let's take a closer look at the data structure. The app has four stories stored as serialized versions of arrays and dictionaries here in the supporting files group. You'll learn more about how to store arrays and dictionaries in the iOS persistence course. So for now, let's focus on how that stored data is parsed into these model objects that represent stories. Here you can see that there's a class to represent each adventure. It has a credits property for the author's name and a start node property which contains the first line of the story. Initially, these adventures get shown by the root table view controller. Here's the table view it governs. And when the user selects a story, the story node view controller gets pushed onto the navigation stack. Let's take a look at that code. So here we are in the root table view controller, and we want to scroll down to the method did select row at index path. So here's what happens when a user chooses a story. First, you get the adventure object. Then, you grab the first node in that adventure. You instantiate the story node view controller from the storyboard object. Then you set the story node that's going to start that adventure and get loaded into the story node view controller and you push the story node view controller onto the navigation stack. The story node view controller shows one story node at a time. Let's take a look at the struct for that story node. Here you can see the message property that provides the text for the story, and then there are three different methods related to the story prompts. The prompt count, which tells you how many rows that prompt table should have. The prompt text for a given index. And then the story node object that a given prompt leads to. You can see that now that we have an underlying data model, we don't need all those view controllers like we had before. We just need this one story node view controller and we populate it with different data. Your challenge is to write the code that'll populate the table of prompts and then perform a push segue to the next story node when a prompt is selected. If you open up the story node view controller and you scroll down to the table view delegate and data source methods, you'll notice that they're either empty or they just have placeholder data. Your challenge is to fill these methods in and get the app working.